So the first part, trends in healthcare service use among Filipinos with useful care providers is authored by PIDES consultant, Ms. Ida Marie Pantig and PIDES senior research fellow, Valerie Gilbert Ulet. It explores the factors influencing useful care provision and how it impacts healthcare utilization across outpatient care, hospital admissions, and emergency room visits, especially in the context of the UHC law in the Philippines. We are very honored this morning to have with us Ms. Ida as our presenter for the first part of the study. Let me introduce our speaker. Ms. Ida Marie Pantig is experienced in health research and has recently contributed to the development of primary care and inpatient benefit packages for PhilHealth. She has also worked with various development institutions to support universal healthcare reforms in the country. She was a former research associate at PIDS, and she holds a master's degree in economics from Waseda University in Japan. Thank you for joining us today, Ms. Ida. You may take the virtual floor. Thank you, Sir Sani. Good morning, everybody. So, um, if I may ask, share the screen. Thank you. So, good morning, everybody. So, I'll be presenting the first part of this three-part study, actually, but we'll be focusing on the first two parts of this of the report. So, the first part is on the trends in outpatient service use among Filipinos with usual care providers. As mentioned, this is an analysis of the National Health Expenditure Survey Round 1, which was um, done in 2018. So if you notice, this, the, the results of this study are actually from pre-UHC time. And then the, um, at, um, even in 2018, the direction really was towards a primary care forward health system. And since then um, I believe there has been a lot of significant updates and reforms in terms of UHC and primary care, which we hope to discuss later together with our discussants, um, SVP Renet and Dr. Alex Herin. So um, next slide, please. Okay, so we start with the context. Um, the guiding principles and policies of the UHC law are in line with the primary health care approach, where WHO defines primary health care as having the information and resources one needs to take care of your health and those you love. So um, with the UHC law, its key features actually include having an integrated and comprehensive approach to ensure that all Filipinos are health literate, provided with healthy living conditions, and are protected from hazards and risks that could affect their health and another feature of the UHC law is that it should be able to provide Filipinos the access to a comprehensive set of quality and cost-effective health services across the continuum of care. So when we talk of the continuum of care, that includes promotive, preventive, curative, rehabilitative, and palliative health services, of course, without causing financial hardship. So that's the primary health care approach. And then when we say primary care, Primary care is within primary health care, and um, the UHC law defines primary care as the initial contact, which is accessible, continuous, comprehensive, and coordinated care that is accessible at the time of need. So that also includes a range of services for all presenting conditions, and also the ability to coordinate referrals to other healthcare providers in the healthcare delivery system. So. When we talk of primary care, it is important to note that we're just not catering to the sick. So this serves the entire population, both the healthy and the ill. Um, primary care system or the primary care provider also serves as the gatekeeper. And when, when we uh, look at the literature, um, primary care is also mo more cost effective than hospital care. Um, let's look at the context of primary care financing in the country. So. Um, there is not really any information that is specific to primary care financing, but when you look at the uh, spending for preventive care, this is at 11.5% of total health expenditure in 2022. Um, this has already increased, actually. So from 2015 to 2019, this has been below 10%, and we're gradually seeing an increase in the share of preventive care um, in terms of the total health expenditure. Um, Consulta, 
um, I believe most of you uh, have heard of Consulta Benefit Package. Um, this the Consulta Benefit Payment is only at 0.3% of the total PhilHealth benefit expenses in 2023. And um, this has already been increasing since 2020. So um, I'm happy that SVP Renet will be joining us later to provide um, updates on the Consulta Benefit Package. Uh, next slide, please. So um, again, primary health care, there isn't really an established primary care system in the Philippines. And um, prior to UHC, some Filipinos may have identified with a usual healthcare provider, right? So um, based on literature, those with usual care providers, they actually have increased odds of receiving preventive care or screening services. And also they are very strongly correlated with earlier receipt of preventive services. So that's not something that we usually see in here in the country because um I think um our healthcare system is still very hospital centric um and curative we're pretty much focused on curative services so therefore the effect of having a usual care provider on preventive services is of importance particularly in low resource settings such as the Philippines next slide please so given that background given that context um or the research question is, um, how does having a usual care provider affect healthcare service use in the Philippines? Um, the objective specifically is to examine the differences in outpatient care use among those with and without a usual care provider. Specifically, the study aims to analyze health service use trends in outpatient care services to explore the determinants of having a usual care provider, and lastly, to examine whether having a usual care provider affects outpatient care use, inpatient admissions, and emergency room visits. So as mentioned, um, this is based on the National Health Expenditure Survey it, done in 2018. Um, it's a nationally representative survey covering healthcare utilization and financing. And for the analysis, we we did the descriptive analysis of, for the trends in outpatient service use, and we made use of a binary response model for measures of association for the last two objectives of the study on the determinants of, of um, having a usual care provider. Next, please. We um give the we also define some of the terms used for this study. A usual care provider is a particular doctor's office or clinic, health center, or other place that the household member goes to when sick or needs advice about his or her health. So it's not limited to uh, a doctor. Um, and in terms of outpatient services, the following are identified as the outpatient services in the survey. So that's general checkup, immunization, vaccination, pregnancy-related outpatient visits, for diagnosis and treatment, follow-up checkup post-treatment and the follow-up checkup post-surgery. So next. So we go straight to the results. Um, first, we look at the trends in health service use. Again, this is focused on outpatient services. So um, we have here a chart um, divided into three parts. So the first part, it looks at the, sh um, the share of households that utilize outpatient services. Um, according to their um, social demographic profile. So we're looking at households as the unit of analysis. Um, and then the green section of the chart looks at utilization of outpatient services among those who identified having a usual health provider. And um, the blue part of the chart looks at the share of households that utilized outpatient services um, for households that did not associate, that do not have a usual health provider. So Given that, we see that around 42% of households utilize some form of outpatient care in the past six months. Um, this is more for households in urban areas, um, households with PhilHealth member, the richer households, and among those with household heads with more education. So we don't have that in the chart, but um, that's also um, what the study found. Um, so in general, we see that um, more households utilized outpatient care among those with usual care provider, that's around 50% of those households compared to those without. Um, 
one limitation of the study is that we're looking at the household as a unit of analysis. So if there's any one member of the household that sought out patient care, um, count natin siya. So that's one limitation of the study. Because if you compare this with the, the demographic and health survey, I think we're seeing it around um, eight, seven, eight percent only. So um, those figures are not very comparable. Um, next slide, please. Um, when we look at the type of outpatient service availed by the households, um, again, we identify the different outpatient services. So majority would visit an outpatient facility for general checkup and for immunization and vaccination. And then we tried to look at the distinction between um, what kind of facilities they visit. So um, there isn't really much difference. Let's say for general checkup, um, 39% of, of the 79% would go to a public facility and then 40% would go to a private facility. Um, except for immunization and vaccination where we see that uh, majority would visit a public facility for that. Um, next slide, please. And then when we look at the average distance and travel time to the facility visited by households, um, on average, um, the average distance between home and the facility is around 8.7 kilometers. And um, the travel time is around 41 minutes. This is one way. And we see that the nearest facilities are again for immunization visits. And the farthest are for follow-ups post the surgery. Um, next slide, please. So for this one, we're looking at, we're trying to identify um, what are the predictors of having a usual care provider? Sino-sino sila na nag identify na ah, ako, meron akong pwedeng puntahan if, um, if I'm sick or I need a health consult. So we want to profile those. And here, what we did is um, we looked at mes measures of association to identify the determinants. So the study finds that the determinants are actually um, urbanity, age, older females, a household head, education and age, um, level of insurance coverage, and wealth quintile. So there's a table on the right. So um, if you look at the odds ratio column, if it's less than one, it means um, they're less likely to have a usual care provider. And if it's more than one, then they're more likely to have a usual care provider. So what's um, what we find here is that um, urban dwellers have almost 20% lower odds of having a usual healthcare provider compared to their rural counterparts. So holding all other variables fixed. So that's one finding. And I think another significant finding we have here is that for the Pantawid member, um, there isn't really any significant finding. So it's um, not relevant if you're a Pantawid member or not, if, uh, if on, on having a usual care provider. And... Um, um, let's go one by one, maybe. So for age, that's also less than one. So the younger you are, the higher odds of having a usual care provider. If you're an older female, um, higher odds. Um, if uh, your household heads education, the higher it is, the higher the odds of having a usual care provider. Um, the same for um, wealth quintile. And also if we go to the... Um, health insurance coverage, we see that if you're a sponsored um, member or an indigent, you have lower odds of, of identifying a usual care provider compared to a PhilHealth paying provide, uh, provide, PhilHealth paying member. Sorry, And um, if you don't have an insurance coverage, you have lower odds of identifying with a usual care provider. Um, so that, that next slide, please. So... Um, for this one, if you then identify with the usual healthcare provider, what is the likelihood that you will be availing of services? So um, the first row looks at um, those with the usual health provider and how that affects the different dependent variables we have identified at the top row. So that's having an outpatient visit, an outpatient visit specific for checkups, the third is an outpatient visit specific for treatment and diagnosis. Um, the fourth is an inpatient admission. And the fifth is an emergency room visit. So what we see is that those with usual care providers 
are more likely to have visited an outpatient facility compared to those without, but not for treatment and diagnosis. Um, that um, that is kind of expected, but um, I think another limitation of this study is that we don't really know what kind of specific services they are availing. So, um, is it because they are um, sick or are they do are they are they're visiting a health uh, facility for for counseling or for for some uh for maybe um some rehabilitation or something that's something that we cannot really answer given this um survey data set but um what we find interesting again is that inpatient admission is also more likely for those with usual care providers than those with compared to those without and same for ER visits so if you recall in the first part of this presentation, um, if you have a primary care provider or if you associate with the usual care provider, it is expected that um, you have um, better preventive service, um, more preventive care services, and therefore, hopefully, decreasing the likelihood of an inpatient admission or an ER visit, which um, is actually more less cost effective in, in terms of um, um, having a uh, looking at the resources for health. So that's something that we don't really see here. So if you have a usual care provider, then they're, you're more likely to be admitted and or also more likely to um, visit an emergency room. Um, again, um, these are measures of association. We're not looking at causality here, but um, hopefully these are insights that we can um, dig deeper when we, when we have um, more data in the future. So next slide, please. So to summarize, um, uh, what we see is that more among th those with usual healthcare providers sought care compared to those without. So um, it sort of implies a positive health-seeking behavior among the population. If you have uh, a doctor or a clinic that you can visit any time for, for consultation or for medical advice, then that's 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 something good right for the population but also um can this also be less cost efficient because we don't really know maybe patients could be seeking care from specialists or from from higher level facilities given the um given the unstructured or um underdeveloped primary care system in the country um that's something that the the data set cannot really answer but um um, hopefully in the future with the UHC reforms happening. Um, that's something that um, we can already address. And then we also find that there's no distinction for preference in either public or private facilities. So maybe we can leverage on integrating all public and private actors in primary care um, in making sure that um, the access of the, of the Filipinos for, for essential health services are available. Um, so that includes public health facilities, the individual healthcare practitioners, polyclinics, community centers, and the diagnostics and labs. And another finding is that there's, um, for those with no insurance coverage or PhilHealth sponsored program and indigent membership and urban dwellers, they have lower odds of having a usual care provider. So maybe recent efforts could be directed towards these population groups. Next, please. So there's also... Well, there's positive marginal effect of having a usual care provider on outpatient visits. There's none for treatment and diagnosis. And maybe improving this could help unburden the hospital system with the management of illnesses that could instead be done at home. So parang shifting yung treatment and management from um, hospital setting to an outpatient setting could be done, could be looked into. Um, also, there's positive marginal effect of having a usual care provider on inpatient admission and ER visits, and these are worth exploring. So, um, as mentioned, maybe there's lack of an established primary care system and the gatekeeping function um, that is essential in this kind of um, um, controlling who goes to hospitals and who goes to ER. Um, Again, just to reiterate, the main limitation of this study is the data quality. So we don't really have that level of disaggregation. And it's also not explicitly stated that the usual care provider is a primary care provider. So we should be interpreting these results with caution. And lastly, um, next slide, please. So 
again, there are still differences in access to care, which affects not just health outcomes, but the use of the health resources for hospital and other services as well. But um, eventually, with the full implementation of the consulta, the consulta plus, consulta plus SDGs and the comprehensive outpatient benefit package, um, we do anticipate to see improvements in primary care and its eventual effect in reducing unnecessary hospital admissions and emergency room visits. So as Filipinos associate with the usual care provider, or in this case, a primary care provider, we are hopeful that we will see a shift in the management of certain chronic diseases from early detection to treatment and management in an outpatient setting. So we know that only around 2% of the population gets hospitalized, but the share of curative care to total health expenditure is actually at 46%. And this gives us room to improve our preventive and primary care services through UHC reform. So um, also, lastly, since um, it was also mentioned that this work was really to look at how we can improve the National Health Expenditure Survey, um, we provide some policy recom some recommendations. So maybe we can emphasize on primary care, especially that the UHC law is pretty much focused on, on primary care benefit packages. If we can also detail the preventive services being availed and identify the different private actors and their specific roles in the health system, plus um, um, expanding on the different household characteristics to further look at um, so, so we can improve how we can target the different um, services within the UHC reforms. So this is my last slide. Thank you so much for listening and looking forward to your questions later. Thank you.